What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. This is episode number 64 and we start today's of stuff on the back of my biggest win in FIFA 22. By finding out we've got the same team in the next round of the DFB Pokal. Now, when it was drawn, it was so funny because I went through the calendar and processed through and I, I saw who we got. Um, and I saw the badge and I was like, hang on a minute, we just beat these guys. 8-0. They can't have risen from the dead that quickly. It turns out it's their reserve team. Yeah, we've got SC Freiburg 2, who are right now in the free league. So the lowest ranked team remaining in the competition in the DFB Pokal last 16. And I thought that was really funny. Like I saw the badge and I was like, what? How can that be possible? But yeah, it's Freiburg's reserve team in the last 16 at the DFB Pokal. And considering the fact we beat their starters 8-0, yeah, feel pretty confident heading into that tied original last day of the cup. Never got further than that before. We've had some really bad luck in terms of cup draws, though, since the save began. We faced Borussia Dortmund in the first season, in the first round we entered, then in season three, we had Bayern Munich in the first season, we entered in season two, we had to take on Munchen Gladbach, and last season, we had our arch nemesis, Augsburg, so we haven't really had much luck in the cup draws, maybe this is the season that all changes, Freiburg's reserves in the last 16, lowest ranked team available, yeah, I'm feeling confident after our big win against their first team. So, first game of today's episode, wasn't expecting to win 8-0 against Again, but Firth away from home survived last season after winning the relegation playoff. Felt very confident heading into this game as Nikola Vlasic gave us a very early lead. Eight goals in ten games for our number nine. Now, I know he had six in his first four, so two in his now six isn't quite as impressive, but overall, it still is. I would have taken, you know, 10 goals for the season and called it a good debut year for Vlasic. If he doesn't get out now, it'll be a massive failure. 8 in 10 is incredible. And after Robin Hack scored our second soon afterwards, leading by two away against Ferro, I felt for sure we're going to get another win here in what's been a very great start to the season for Armenia Bielfeld. 31 minutes in, Mukieli rolls through Konstantin Schaefer down the right. He almost got his first goal of the season in the Bundesliga. Great save in the near post there. Kept it 2-0, but really, in the first half, it was all Bielfeld. I often talk about form as we almost scored a crazy lucky goal here. Great clearance off the line of the 2-0. I often talk about form as being so OP in FIFA CM. And we often see AI teams gain momentum and climb up the table so quickly if they're in really good form because they can rarely stop winning. And then on the other side of the coin, we often see teams, and particularly big teams, fall away sometimes when they were challenging for the title or a European place and then fall away because they go into catastrophic form. It doesn't just affect AI clubs, but your club as well. When you're in bad form, you've lost, let's say, two on the bounce and maybe you draw on another, it can feel an almost impossible task to sort yourself out and get a consistent run of wins going. But when you are dominating and you're also scoring goals as well, left, right and centre, it just feels as though you won't stop for a very long time. In this game, no exception. Jamie Lewelling against his former team back, that third goal. And Okugawa almost got another to make it 4-0. Our five minutes to go, still leading by three. I so badly wanted to get Messiah a goal. And I would the boys linking up for the first time this season. Jamie Lewelling sent forward, rolls it to his bro and Okugawa. Man, I'm gutted the injuries completely completely ruined this guy. I mean, seriously, last season only played 12 games all season long. The year before that, did his ACL. I'm gutted, man. He was my talisman. He was my star, but in this game, did come off the bench to get a goal, and it was nice to see. First in the Bundesliga for Messiah this season, I think. Am I right in saying that? Pretty sure I am, but hey, listen, we're going to take it. He wraps it up, puts the cherry on the icing on the cake with our fourth goal and a big win, which we definitely deserve as well, as you would have seen by the stats there. Anyway, following game, fourth game of the Champions League group, CSKA Moscow here at the Shuka Arena. And heading into the game, you would have seen the group there. Had we win this game, we would we were guaranteed qualification. Two games to spare, it would be all over. And I've talked about it before after winning our first three games. For me, in Champions League and Europa League groups, I, I know it sounds really obvious when I say this, but the best tip I can give is just get qualification out of the way and wrapped up as soon as possible. As you see, heading into this game, we had the staff on the pitch once again. Why does this keep happening? I don't understand. It's 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 February. We're about to go into March, EA. 
there's staff still on the pitch. Especially in Champions League trials. This shouldn't be happening. Why does this keep happening? Come on EA man, seriously. It only happens in select games. But it's just so frustrating because they're not, you know, playable. They're not uh, physical like you would have seen during that moment there. Schaefer ran straight through them. You, they don't affect the play whatsoever. They're just distracting. And it really breaks up the immersion and the, the realism, of course. But even so, come on, EA. I, I, know it's, I know it sounds like a bit of a minor gripe to have when there are much bigger problems with the game as well. But it just it really does break away from the immersion, you know. Again, because they're not physical, it means they can't interfere with play. You can run through them, the ball can go straight through them as well. But I think bugs like this that are still in the game after like so many months, and they're glaring bugs as well. It's not like it's an ambiguous one. They're clear errors and clear glitches. They, they need to be fixed. And I can't believe we're about to approach March. This has been a problem since this, the game came out. And it still hasn't been fixed yet. EA, come on, man, what are you doing? Even so, in this game, we led by two in the second half. Robin Hack scored our second half. Breckelow put us in front in the first half. CSK Moscow, to their credit, actually had a couple of chances. Good save by Stefan in the first half. And then right before the break, almost headed in a leveler just wide from a corner. But thankfully, we weathered a little bit of a mini storm in the first half from CSK in Moscow. And got our third goal of 18 minutes to go as well. Marco Ludwig got our third in this game. He might not always be a starter in this team now that Hubner's has come in, but he's still Still a really important player in this squad. We led by three and then with nine minutes to go, a chance to make it four. Karim Adeyemi putting the pressure on, sees the poor back pass, roll, uh, roll straight to Patrick Vimmer in behind the back line. And Patrick off the bench bags our fourth in a demolition job here against CSK Moscow. I've got to be honest, the scoreline was one of those which was quite deceptive. It was quite unfair. I don't really feel I played that well in this game. I was certainly clinical, no doubt about that. But you'll see by the stats in just a moment's time. Well, so we've got the four a win and guarantee qualification with two games to spare. I don't think it was as one-sided as the scoreline made it out to be. This was a, a much tougher game than the scoreline appeared to suggest. Yes, we get the win. Yes, it's by four goals now. And yes, as you'll see, with guarantee qualification with two games to spare. Spurs beat Marseille. So, we're both heading through with two games to spare. The only thing to, matter, uh, to be decided upon now is who tops it. We've got Spurs on match day five at the Shuka Arena. Avoid defeat in that game and due to the head-to-head -head record will guarantee top spot of a game to spare. So all we need to do is hold Antonio Conte's side to a draw and we'll guarantee top spot with one game to go. That's obviously my aim. Don't need to win. I'd love to be able to go to the Velodrome on match day six, not needing to get anything to guarantee top spot. Qualifications in the bag, but I want top spot to come with because we know last season, after finishing up to runners up to Paris Saint-Germain, Due to finishing second, we had to face Manchester City in the last 16 and, of course, were humbled and lost the tie 4-0. So this year, I want to learn from my, let's not say mistakes, but I want to learn from my past. If we top the group, we should theoretically have a weaker side in the last 16 or a side not strong. I don't think you can say a weaker side in Champions League knockout stage, but a side who wouldn't be considered to be as strong as a team that topped the group. So... Got to make sure I do the draw on match day five, avoid defeat, and it'll mean go to the velodrome and we will be safe as group winners with a game to spare. Still, following game, third and final one, back to matters in the Bundesliga here at the Shuka Arena, taking on FC Khan. We had a very early two goal lead here against the side that right now are struggling this season. Uh, Constantine Schaefer set them both up, and in the first half, I've got to be honest, with you, he was absolutely running the show. And I kept on looking for him because in this team, he's the anchor man. He's the guy that sits back, doesn't really get forward, rarely gets a goal. Rarely Rarely gets an assist. I'll tell you, one goal a season is a good record for Schaefer and his team. But in this game, he was running the show. Set up our first two goals. Almost got a hat-trick of assists in the first half. That shot by Lewenin going into the side netting. And Cole in this game didn't really cause me any problems until the second half. In the first half, we were dominant. And if I'm being honest here, had my finishing been better, we would have been four or five goals up. As it was, we only led by two. And in the second half after day, half the deficit, I was starting to feel a little bit nervous. This might be one of those games where I don't take my chances and I'm punished for it. It. Thankfully, just past the hour mark, we would restore our two-goal cushion. Robin Hack getting his ninth for the season and his brace in this game. Great save initially turned onto the post, but Hack the first to react. Turns into young guard in there, makes it 3-1. Our two-goal cushion restored. And to be fair to Cole in this game as well, like, I don't know why I didn't really attack in the first start. It caused me no problems at all, but their build-up in the second was brilliant. This is a fantastically worked goal from just inside my area there. Stands you with the finish. It's 3-2. And after that, I was feeling a little bit nervous. Late goals as well. 
we know, so, so common. I was clinging on to the one goal lead, trying to see out the three points. I was six minutes to go after Stefan claims this corner. He throws it through to Florian Newhow. Great ball over the top. And you love to see it two in two from the Sire Okugawa. Do you remember earlier in the episode I was saying that's Okugawa's first of the season? I think. It was because I remember he scored another goal in this episode. I forgot it was in the third game and not the first. But yeah, Okugawa gets our fourth of the game, restores our two goal cushion with, there it is, his second goal in the Bundesliga. Oh, Messiah, you're a third choice playmaker now. You won't get much game time, but you'll always be a fan favourite. Clinches the game with the dagger, 4-2. Armenia Bielfeld definitely deserved a win in this game. If we had a cold note, it did come forward. It looked very threatening indeed, but we get the win 4-2 the final score which means you remain top of the Bundesliga we're a point away from guaranteeing top spot in the Champions League group we're guaranteed to be going through the last 16 for the second time in two years in Europe's Premier competition into the last 16 of the DFB Pokal against the lowest ranked team and four points clear in the Bundesliga as well nine wins and 11 to start the season off of our title defense campaign it's been a brilliant start to season five with Armenia Bielefeld but that will end today's episode of the Bundesliga Premier guys big fan fortune hope you enjoyed it drop a like. Much love to you. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of the Bundesliga career mode very soon.